We just had a special request come in. We are going to be mixing it up and we are going to go from a panel and then a panel, but instead we are going to combine them and have a mega panel here at the CEO Preneurship. So ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for this big one. Paulo Andres is gonna step up and chair the mega panel. Why is he the man for the job? Well, 14 companies in his portfolio, 2012 best European angel investment. Uh, for one of his companies that exited, I think after one year, it went to $25 million in revenue. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Paulo, thank you very much for coming and sharing the mega panel that we are gonna be throwing up here on stage. Uh, Pinar Masena, Chief Executive Officer of Workington, Turkey, is on her way. She started her career with pre seems like every part of Sigorta that they have, um, but then went on, founded her own companies in insurance, uh, massive operations in the healthcare sector. Then she got into health tech, the marriage of technology for data and systems and health, but now has completely transformed herself again and is doing Workington, co-working spaces, the hottest thing in the startup sector. So thank you very much for joining us today, Pinar. As well, uh, we have Sinar uh, Ontel, the Chief Executive Officer of Triggy Turkey. He plays a double role as the Chair of United Brands Association of Turkey. Now, we are going to be taking them and merging them with another section. I just got the word. So we're, we're working on who exactly is going to be part of that group. I'm hoping Abdul Malek Al-Jabbar is going to be part of that. Why don't you have a seat while we're waiting? Uh, please feel free. I don't want to wear you out. I think this one might run a little bit longer than normal. Um, thank you very much, Abdul, uh, Abdul Malak Al-Jabbar, President of the Middle East Trade Association for Business Angels. Uh, his big thing lately is Mina Apps, and he has been uh, organizing sessions to help entrepreneurs come, to get, uh, come together at startup sessions. Uh, invested in, I believe, over 35 startups, is that right? Yes, sir, 35 startups, of which 40% are headed by women in the Middle East, North Africa area, so I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. You're doing a great job there. Next, uh, Tijan Morgan is going to be joining us. She is the founder of The Power of Happiness right here in Turkey. Started her career selling Apple computers, right? Yes, and then was in the technology sector, but later on switched over and has helped major multinationals with core, uh, their CSR responsibilities and also working with companies. Uh, maybe to bring them a little bit of happiness as well uh, and bring motivation to employees. Um, and one thing, you know, as we get to some of the last things, you know, we had some sessions earlier today that talked about how hard, uh, how, you know, kind of women have special challenges in business. But since we've been here, I've seen so many impressive women in business. We've got two on this panel. I mean, uh, Bybars must have brought all the best here to WBAF. And I will turn them over to you, Apollo. The stage is yours for the mega panel. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for them. Get them all fired up. Thank you for um, this introduction. So you helped me uh, introducing this, uh, what? One more speaker is coming. It, 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 okay, they didn't have a chair for him? One speaker or just the sticker? So we are having this, uh, this large session. It's a merge of uh, two sessions, okay. two panels. So um, I'm curious to, to, to ask one question to the, to the panel. I will allow them to, to talk, to introduce themselves or about the topic during three minutes. But I have a question. So I assume that you consider yourselves uh, very good CEOs. So my question is, does a good CEO mean a good business angel? So you can say whatever you want in three minutes, but try to answer this question as well. So maybe we, we start here. Um, uh, Pinar, so can you, um, about the, the topic about our panel, the CEO becoming angel investor and talk a little bit yes. about your story because I think it's a great story. Okay, uh, first of all, maybe I explain, uh, last 25 years I've been uh, top management position in the companies. Uh, I uh, manage and I created a lot of uh, new businesses actually in my career. Uh, my last uh, business is, um, I, I also, <clears throat> uh, in a big group in Turkey, I had an uh, entrepreneur, like, you know, uh, I, I created and I developed a business, and then the, it sold out to, sold uh, to two-digit million dollars to American company, and then uh, I decided uh, to, to do my own business, <laughs> to be an entrepreneur. Uh, why not? I'm doing myself, I said. And uh, I started an entrepreneur, uh, I started a business in 2011, it was, which I saw the digital uh, is uh, the future. And uh, 
I jumped to, to work on it, and at the same time, my son was uh, graduating in the United States, and I, I, he said, I work, I work with you. It's become a family business, actually. But what I saw, it's uh, to do, being a CEO as a, in a company, and after uh, to having an, being an entrepreneur, it's uh, really difficult. Uh, after you lar large uh, management, and then you cannot manage the small size company. So I left it to him, and uh, he's still going on and is very successful right now. It's almost uh, four year past, and. Uh, and now I'm running a co-working space, which is uh, I'm uh, already uh, together with uh, uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, this is co-working places, which Workington is uh, since two, 2012. It's been uh, doing this work, and uh, we are giving services all entrepreneurs and the freelancers and uh, newcomers, new company, you know, the, the virtual offices and etc. So every day, almost 2,000 uh, entrepreneurs and startups and uh, new business uh, establishers are uh, joining our offices, and uh, they are working. To, we are working together. We have network for them, and the community managing their community, giving a lot of uh, uh, trainings and etc. It's too much. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe just a little, little, little finish, finalize it. And uh, also, we are giving an incubation center, which is the important topic in this part, I guess, because we have startups, and uh, we are looking, uh, we are um, developing their ideas. And now, we are after six months, we are looking for the investors, angel investors. So uh, everybody here are welcome. Uh, we can explain later. That's, that's but but you, you don't invest on those companies. You don't invest in those companies, no. Uh, <laughs> I didn't invest yet because it's last uh, year we have been working on it. But last uh, six months it's it's been working, and we are giving the first uh, uh, graduation. Uh, they are leaving now the offices because we, they develop their ideas. But I learned that I will invest them. Okay. But ethically, we have to discuss maybe later. All right. <laughs> so. Um, uh, Renge. To, yeah, Renge, it's a difficult name. Yes. Hello, everybody. Yes, sometimes uh, uh, CEOs can be a good entrepreneur, I think, if they have really a good DNA for the business. Uh, they can be a good entrepreneur. And even if they don't have a good structure to be a, a good entrepreneur uh, by the years i think one ceo can learn many things by doing his job uh, malcolm gladwell says in outliers uh, by doing um, the same job by concentrating the same uh, uh, focus you can uh, you can be very successful but you have to be uh, concentrate. You have to concentrate. So, uh, my opinion is uh, yes, good CEO can be a good entrepreneur. But uh, in the, our uh, the in point our is, if it, uh, good CEO can be a good investor, can be investor, investor, investor yes. angel. If it automatically, if uh, okay. it's a good CEO, it's automatically a good business. No, angel. no, this is not uh, automatically. No. Uh, no, it is not because to manage uh, a business and uh, to see the opportunities are two different things, in my opinion. Uh, so. Uh, uh, but as you are always, uh, as the CEO is always in the business life and in the uh, in the middle of the uh, field, uh, on the playing field, uh, they they might uh, take good decisions. But it doesn't mean they they can always uh, take good decisions. Uh, so, uh, in my opinion. Uh, for as an angel, if you ask me if if good CEO can be a good um, angel investor, I can say sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> okay, Abdul Malik. Um, I think uh, a retired CEO is the best angel investor, not not a current uh, CEO. Can you speak closer to the mic, please? Um, I'm saying a retired CEO 
is a much better angel investor than um, an existing CEO uh, for, for simple reasons. If you're a CEO of a company, um, especially in, in, um, in our part of the world, there are lots of limitations um, uh, and, and implications for um, taking decisions to uh, invest in startups, especially the startup startups. It's, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. Um, and of course, there is always this um, thin line um, uh, in terms of alignment of interests um, uh, as well. If you are at a retired CEO, then it's a, it's a much different bull game because uh, uh, the uh, startup or the entrepreneur will, will, will get the, the full package, the benefits of the experience of, uh, of the CEO, as well as the contacts uh, of, of that CEO. Um, on top of that, um, the energy devoted, um, which the startup uh, and the entrepreneur needs for sure, um, is, is without, without cap, without, without limits. So um, uh, an existing CEO, it depends on, on different factors, if he can be a, a good angel investor uh, or not. Uh, it depends, of course, if it's a family business, if it's a publicly listed company, it depends on many factors. If it's, about, if it's a family business, it's much easier than if, it's, uh, um, uh, if he's just an employee in that particular company. So now we have uh, Tien, so she will tell us a little bit about uh, her story. So you, you are a good CEO, but um, you made some mistakes in terms of angel investing. So it does mean that... Uh, so should I tell my story now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, um, today what I'm doing is, in fact, uh, I'm selling my uh, experiences and uh, know-how. Uh, so I, I, my brain is my capital, but in the past, back in 2009, uh, when I was working for uh, the media group, uh, Doan uh, Group, I decided to make an investment as a business angel. There was a, a very interesting project called Maplook at that time, and there were 27 uh, investors in the first round, the founders, and the project was really excellent. It was uh, uh, the, uh, it's kind of a social media uh, connecting people with the places and the uh, business people. So uh, the four square is not there yet. Uh, it was like Facebook plus four square and plus some some additional things. So uh, the main idea is uh, generated in one of the restaurants, the cafe cafeteria, all sports. Uh, the, the regular visitors, the regular customers of all sports, these 27 people, and uh, they collected 1.5 million dollars in first round, and I was I, in, I joined them in the second round, um, and we failed at the end. Uh, after six or seven months, uh, the whole uh, capital is just was just diminished, uh, and I can count a couple of reasons. The first one was. Uh, we were all uh, professionals from uh, big companies, big corporates, so we really uh, make a big, big plans. The business plan was covering 10 years. Uh, the, the software development was very sophisticated. So we really, we were not agile. We were not uh, dynamic enough. So this is one of the reasons we failed. Uh, we couldn't see uh, the dynamism. And the other one is uh, we spent too much money on software development and the software never finished. Never. <laughs> never finished. I mean, it went on. And uh, each, each time we are facing with another six months delay. So uh, these two reasons, and as I, I uh, totally agree with Sinan, uh, the innovator may not be the bi a good businessman. So the team of the... Uh, Startup is very important. I mean, innovation is something, but that doesn't mean that this guy, uh, especially if he's young and inexperienced in business, will manage the whole business. So there is a, a, a team. Uh, the team is very important, and there the CEO's role may be uh, uh, will be very very important. It's not just the investor, but also to put the, some finance views and the business plans together is very important. So uh, the team was not 
uh, act like this. We left everything to the innovator, to the young people, and uh, they couldn't see the uh, future. Okay, a lot. thank you. So our last speaker is uh, Ersin. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience as CEO and uh, uh, angel investor? Yeah. Um, well, I would say definitely I would encourage CEOs to become angel investors because when you look to the startups, especially markets like Turkey or underdeveloped markets when it comes to startup ecosystem, etc. So what startups need, they need smart money and um, they should be getting some kind of execution guidance because you know when you have the idea you have the say technical mindset whatever it is then you need to make that happen and you need to get support on the execution side if you have on board CEOs who has uh, execution experience they may um, help you out of this so I definitely encourage CEOs to become smart investors into the uh, startups where they can really be big help to the that we have about 42 investments and there we all see that this startups needs execution guidance okay so we see here everyone says that uh, they are encouraging the the CEOs to become angel investors but um, the point is uh, why there are not so many CEOs becoming angel investors. Uh, so there are more and more, but it's still a very low percentage. So I'd like to, to hear from you so you, you don't have any investment as, a, as an angel investor. So why haven't you invested before? It's because lack of knowledge, it's lack of deal flow, uh, lack of regulation. What? Is the, the world is changing after the digital evolution, and uh, of course the the business changing as we see the the new uh, businesses. In the past, we were not thinking to uh, be an angel investor. Even an angel investor is uh, coming new, newly actually, and uh, we were thinking that it's impossible if you are working with a company it's, as a CEO. You have to focus on everything and you have to control everything, but you cannot make any other things. It's not maybe ethic, and it's you know that was the idea in the past. But now, uh, as I'm more involved with the, this co-working area uh, and, and the incubation centers and the ecosystem, the more I see, the more I saw, the more I learn every day. As a CEO, I'm really thinking to invest uh, for, for the invest for the angel, being an angel investor. Uh, Yes, maybe you can say lack of time, but I don't believe that as a CEO we have to interfere what the entrepreneur doing or startup doing and we should not touch too much to them and we should not squeeze them so we have to stay back. They will achieve or they will not achieve. We don't know maybe, but we have to wait and see. Maybe just to be the guidance, to, make a, to be a guide for them and to show the way. So. If you say uh, it's not a lack of time in, anymore, so we are we have a lot of experience, we know a lot of uh, knowledge uh, about business, so we can just uh, easily we can show the way. So that's rest of it is belong to them. So it's not lack of time, I, uh, I believe. It's not a conflict of interest anymore. Uh, I can invest in from now on. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, one point is, I think there are two types of CEOs. One is the, the CEO that is, he owns his own company, so or her, uh, uh, she owns uh, her own company. So there is the person can invest the time and the money and the resources the way the person wants. Another thing, and I think it's a different game, is the CEO of a large corporate like Abdul Malek um, that has tons of shareholders that uh, pay him millions of euros or dollars per, per year. Uh, if you want to disclose how much you earn, that's fine, no problem. I'm not encouraging you. But so how do these shareholders can see the CEO that is super well paid uh, spending time in those little investments as a, a startup. So maybe, uh, Abdul Malik, do you want to, to jump? How can you 
uh, well, cope you, with this problem? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you um, uh, frankly, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult job. It's, it's a very difficult job. Uh, if you are, especially if it's a publicly listed company with all the uh, uh, compliance and uh, today, uh, it's enough to have an angry, greedy uh, entrepreneur to go against you on social media and then create a lot of problems. It, it, that's the reality. And um, um, uh, many entrepreneurs, they you know, they believe they're Bill Gates, and you know, they they, they um, we we've had many uh, examples of. Uh, uh, burned our hands with these entrepreneurs. So I personally, I think it's extremely difficult if you are a CEO of a public listed company with many shareholders who, um, uh, you know, will, will, will slaughter you based on the financial results and the, the quarterly reporting, etc., etc. So it's not an easy to task at all. It can be easy or it can be easier if um, uh, there are uh, angel networks. So if uh, that could be the best substitute, that could be the best tool for CEOs who are engaged in uh, publicly listed companies or even uh, uh, privately owned companies, but not by them, not their family companies, okay. um, through these angel networks, through an angel club that could invest in startups. And this way, it would become safer and also you, you don't have to allocate the, the, the full time. You, you, you would agree among yourselves on a, on a mechanism how to uh, provide the guidance and the support and the smart money in the most efficient way to these, uh, to these companies. Yeah, but that is not a little bit a paradox. So basically we are saying that the, the power of an angel is about not just about the money, it is about networking and the mentoring. Absolutely. And now we say, no, but for a CEO that has the, the money, the networking and the mentoring, the best thing is go through an angel network where you will just put the money. So. Not only the money. No, 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 no. Not only the money. I mean, uh, it's a collective. Um, it's no, a coll it's, I'll, I'll tell you. It's, it's, it's. If, if I'm in a hidden telecom company, I would think twice before investing in a startup that is related to my business. But if it's through a network, then I can create this this kind of uh, okay. barrier that will that will help me handle this conflict. And at the same time. Um, if I'm investing in five startups or start six startups as an angel investor, the amount of time I have to spend is en enormous. But if it's a, an angel network of 10 or 12 uh, uh, friends and they collectively put the effort, it's much easier. I, I'm, I'm, Paolo, it's, it's a difficult thing. It's a know, very complicated thing. I'm just trying to provocate a little bit. Um, so do we all agree that the best way for a uh, Virgin CEO in terms of Virgin business angel uh, that is a CEO uh, to start is uh, through a business angel network? Um, do you agree or do you have different opinions? of the panel. Any, anyone wants to, to comment further this? Okay, so conflict of interest. So you are a CEO so of a big uh, corporate, for instance, and um, you see a fantastic startup that um, it's very interesting, but the, the startup can, um, can serve, can sell services or products to your own company. So you have two options. You, you say to the company, hey, I want to invest in you, but you cannot sell to my group. Of course, the other investors in the company will say, what the hell, you don't want this CEO, just remove him from the investors. Or you can, you can just accept, and then you, on, there is a decision on your, in, in your company to buy the product or the service, you play the role, say, no, I don't have anything related uh, with this uh, deal, so I don't vote for this deal. So how can you manage the conflict of interest? Or you just invest in companies that are not related with your business? Experience. Uh, I can share, I can share um, a case where the startup was killed because of that, unfortunately. Was killed. Yeah, unfortunately. So it's very dangerous. Uh, well, um, you know, the, the, the company I was chairman of and um, the largest shareholder, it's, it's a payment company. Um, and my partners were the largest banks. So they are all publicly listed companies and they all have compliance departments that, uh, with auditors and you can imagine what I'm talking about. And this, you know, um, a startup that had uh, an amazing disruptive solution um, in the payment domain and, you know, the only way for them to grow is to integrate with the other company. 
and it was a it was a miss. And the end game was to kill the startup because the startup, you know, I was. Um, um, you know, the major investor, I had other investors, but I was the major investor and I had to kill the startup so that we don't have this huge miss um, in, the, in the bigger company um, uh, and, you know, that, that's So basically, angel investors kill startups, yes? So this is the, the conclusion of... Uh... In this case, in this case that, that was the outcome. In this case, there was, I mean, because, listen, um, if we had... The, the angel network mechanism, we, we could have found a way. But in this particular case, you know, I'm the largest shareholder in the payment company, and I'm the largest investor in the startup. And then it, it, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to maneuver and find a way. Technically speaking, there was no conflict. Technically speaking, you know, if you want to go into the um, uh, outside the box and thinking, thinking in, a, in an innovative way, there was no conflict. But it's so impossible it's 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 a miracle to have banks understand that this disruptive a new startup is actually not in contradiction with this payment company for, for, for banks anything anything that is in the payment industry is eating part of the business so yep, it, it's a conflict I would say it was mainly a conflict between two visions the classical vision and the new vision and then uh, in this case regretfully the the price had to be paid through killing the startup Hersin, do you have any issues like this, a conflict of uh, interest? Have you faced this kind of situation? Yeah, what I would like to say, I mean, first of all, we need to divide CEOs in two parts, yeah. active and retired ones. I'm one retired CEO. I retired myself at the age of 46. Since then, I operate... Last year, so you retired 2002. last year. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's one part I'd like to address. The other part is... Uh, I mean, all the people like myself need to be re-educated for acting in the angel investor or startup arena. So you need to be prepared to be re-educated. And if you are, um, I mean, re-education is important even for active ones because active ones are, uh, as a CEO, you need to reinvent your company the way you do business. And um, I mean, um, being part of such an ecosystem is definitely a big need of today's big companies. I mean, if you look, I come from telecom industry. When you look to the telecom industry, we used to have eight years of cycle for a product group. And those cycles now down to 12 to 18 months. So as a CEO, you need to learn how to act quick, how to be innovative, how to handle youngsters. Mm -hmm. So that's why I believe it's a, a must for active ones to become active in the startup world and entrepreneurship for reinventing their big bodies, the com big companies, they need to go into the corporate entrepreneurship. And then for retired ones, they need to re-educate themselves so they can give some kind of uh, meaningful contribution to the, their uh, investing uh, startups. Yes. Uh, thank you for t uh, touching this point about education because um, the experience that uh, at IBAN uh, we have is that it's very difficult to bring uh, very high level CEOs to trainings. So if you call training, the CEOs will say, what, I know everything. So you need to put a different name, like uh, uh, advanced uh, workshop for advanced uh, business angels, advanced master. You have to put a lot of names so that they don't feel bad. So I, I like to hear that people say that uh, Others should go to the training, but when we go to the market, it's difficult for them to admit that they don't want to, to, to go. And get certified uh, as an angel, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to go like an exam. People say, no, why would I go to an exam? So what do you think, uh, Tien, about this, um, this, uh, this topic about training? Do you think that um, CEOs should go to training? How do you feel to go to a training to become a business angel? Peki, uh, Ersin uh, touched a very important three points. I was just mentioning about that. The first one is uh, you have to uh, learn the new technology. You have to update yourself, uh, what's going on, 
And so this is a continuous education. Uh, the other one is to learn to uh, deal with uh, young people, uh, their behaviors and their understanding is completely different than us. So this is one of the important points that uh, CEOs should learn to deal with the young generation. And the other one is agility. Definitely, uh, corporate people, we like to have reports and you know we have some time to get some results. So we, we are not agile. So we have to learn agility. We have to learn to act quicker. These are the three points really we have to learn as CEOs to be successful in the uh, startups. And what, for example, I, I keep uh, hearing is that the mentoring for the startups. So there are many uh, occasions uh, young people need mentoring. Now, uh, in my company, we are doing the reverse, reverse mentoring. Uh, the young people giving mentoring to uh, CEOs or uh, uh, top management in order them to understand what they are doing and why they are doing. So these are the points, really important uh, education points. Um, Sinan, what is your point on this in terms of the training and uh, do you think about it's important for the CEOs to get educated how before they start it? How to encourage? Yeah, yeah. No, not to encourage, but how to, do you think that um, they are aware that they need training to become good business angels or, uh, and how to convince them to go to a training? Yes. Maybe the manager, uh, the top management, I think, uh, should encourage them, I will repeat again, to convince uh, the CEOs uh, as they know everything, for, for example, they can say, and this is a Dalai Lama, Dalai Lama management. So uh, still, uh, as Dalai Lama is the top of the, uh, let's say, wisdom uh, or top of the um, uh, learning, let's say, uh, maybe they can, uh, the top management can uh, convince the CEO uh, uh, to go to that kind of uh, edu education, uh, little educational session. Uh, otherwise, uh, as you know, as you said, uh, we know everything in, in advance. Maybe we born, we are born by uh, all this information sometimes. Uh, so every uh, all of us uh, need uh, to renew himself, uh, especially as uh, uh, as she says. Uh, uh, especially for the technology. And so, w where do you think is the, what is the best way to learn um, in terms of a business angel? Is to learn from the peers, so to go to talk with them and understand how they do things, um, or to go to a classroom and uh, be trained by a professional angel investor, and in order that he tells you how things should be. Or you think that you also learn from the entrepreneurs that tell you what other angels uh, told them. What do you think, it, the, the, these three ways, what is the best way to learn, to become a good business angel? Uh, you know, the best way, I think, uh, you learn um, in a better way by losing money. Ah, so losing money. <laughs> yes, by losing money you can. Uh, earn I think here in uh, Turkey you have casinos. Yes. Sorry. In casinos you have casinos. So ah, yes. losing money it's, in casinos is very it's very easy. You just go there, just do this. It's two seconds. So yes. you, what did you learn after? You just uh, lose. Yes, money. <laughs> but in a, um, an angel investment, um, you know, uh, it's up to uh, it's up to uh, to your family structure also, yeah. and. Uh, uh, how much you are rich and is very important. For example, is very famous um, uh, angel investor friend. Uh, we were all talking to each other, and he said, "Hey, come on! We all lost a lot of money uh, on angel investment." I said, "Sorry, but you are you are the one of the richest guy of the country. You can lose a lot of money, but I I don't I don't have uh, that limit to lose money. So I can lose." just a, a limited money, so you can lose a lot of money to learn. So maybe sometimes uh, when I think uh, the philosophy, uh, when I think the philosophy to learn uh, by losing money, uh, I think uh, the people who has uh, bigger capital, 
uh, is more uh, has advantage also uh, has advantage also to learn uh, by making mistakes at the uh, the one who has a limited capital uh, uh, naturally has um, uh, has no limit to lo to lose okay we have uh, several Ersin has asked uh, then you come then I have a question for Tian okay Ersin okay um, what I like to add here we have a recently started organization called mentor effect where the main idea behind that um, uh, organization is to train okay. CEOs and CXOs into this arena wh where we are discussing so what we do we have a kind of um, we already covered 200 um, uh, say potential candidates so what we do we give them a kind of training in the new economy we give them a training the behavioral uh, uh, say um, uh, uh, habits or behavioral patterns of startups and new entrepreneurship and uh, we give them an idea about how to mentor this type of startups also we give them an idea about how to invest in these areas so what i would say i mean when we are talking about training the old school ceos cxos etc we should have a kind of um, uh, common interest groups where we have um, as a group uh, trying to fill the gaps between uh, i mean it encourages a lot when they sit five of them 10 of them and then going through such a process and they know that the other party is also such a person and uh, that I don't see any problem to recruit this type of people for the training at least we up to now we had 200 and this year we will do another 500 people so it's my great. experience is it's doable yeah sometimes what I, what I feel is uh, if you have some top people already that uh, enrolled in the course, the others will follow. Oh, so if this guy is a top uh, CEO of Coca-Cola uh, worldwide, is going to the training, so I don't have any problem to go. But if uh, this is not known, sometimes they have a little bit problems. Um, so, Abdul Malik, and uh, for, for, I think first of all, the, the fundamental question: um, who, who opts to be, who chooses to be an angel investor? So that, that's, a, that's a fundamental question. So the minute that person starts you know, thinking about being an angel investor, of course there must be certain motives um, for, a, for a, a CEO to become an uh, angel investor. Definitely it's a combination that the, that person believes he reached a certain stage of his life of wisdom and experience and network and wealth and uh, he can capitalize on that, he can use that to both contribute in the uh, society, um, be part of the transformation, of course, and make money, definitely. If anybody wants to go um, as, as, as uh, you know, with, with all due respect, to lose money, I don't think you should go to angel investing, because if you go to angel investing you, to lose money, then you know, the startup you are investing in will lose, and then the whole chain will be a disaster. So I think the first intention should be, I want to make money, which means the startup will succeed, which means the, the um, chain effect will be positive, not negative. So first of all, you have that uh, clear motive, that clear decision uh, for, for that person to become an angel investor. Second, I agree that the classical training won't work. Um, w you know, um, I think Ersen is, is, is agreeing on the same concept that we're talking about. There is a, there's a, an ecosystem that is, that is encouraging people to join, be it through a, a network um, uh, with, with the, some uh, shapers or some uh, uh, well-known people joining. I think having angel groups is, is a fundamental. You know, in Dubai, we go and do the, the um, uh, training in the, the IFC club, which is the most lucrative club in, in Dubai. So you invite people to uh, speak about their experience and train. You know, you could also come up with the CEO tra training at Harvard. So there are different mechanisms, but I think the best vehicle for this is the angel networks. Through these angel networks, I think the, the, your experience, uh, uh, Paolo, with, with the IPAN, it works very well. When you have these angel groups, then you know, an angel group of 10, 15, 20, they can always have these couple of hours training or speakers and sharing experiences. So I think 
it is first the question is that person really wants to become an angel investor. That's the fundamental barrier. The minute you cross that barrier, then you can go to the other stages much easier. Pinar, you want to, to add something here? Uh, of course, Mr. Al Jabbar has a huge uh, experience, and you too, and uh, as an in angel investor. But uh, I can say something be, uh, on the other side. As we have an incubation center, uh, we have a lot of uh, mentors coming and uh, you know you cannot say maybe the CEO okay go and learn this and take a training and so on but it can come naturally naturally in our uh, environments like co-working area like uh, you know techno parks and uh, there are lots of organizations and incubation centers and they can go uh, and they can join the, some pitching uh, and starting at least from over here. So they will more touch the startups, they will feel and they will understand what is it. You know, it's uh, uh, so maybe you, the CEOs will not go to uh, training schools and etc., but they will learn living with these people in these environments, I say. Tien, I have um, a question for you. We have also received two questions from the floor, and if someone wants to ask a question, just raise the hand, and uh, I will give the opportunity to ask the question. But um, so um, you are from the power of happiness. So we, uh, as angels, sometimes lose money, and it's not just about the money. Sometimes we lose. Imagine that uh, a big CEO invested in a company, and that company goes bankrupt. So it's about the reputation. So how is possible, what is the secret sauce that someone that just lost a lot of money uh, becomes happy? So that's the, the point. How can we bring, so we can say to the, to the business angels, if you make money, you are happy. If you lose money, you are happy because of this. So do not disappoint us. Huh? <laughs> No, I mean, there's not, not a magic answer for that, <laughs> of course. But uh, we have to know that uh, still more than 85, 90% of the startups will fail. So there's a, uh, so we should know that at the beginning, that might not work. Uh, so you I mean that if there are 10 investors, it means that uh, me and the other one will be lucky and the other eight will lose the money. Is that what exactly. investors I mean, will see? We should, we should be ready for that. Okay. I mean, there's a failure and win, uh, success. Everything is for us. So we have to know that from the beginning. But I, I just want to say maybe some another thing. Uh, good combination, good meat is very important. I mean, we, as CEOs, I mean, we shouldn't really jump to any, uh, all the opportunities we have. But each and every company, even a, a startup, needs uh, a strategy from the financial point of view, from the marketing point of view, from the technology point of view. So uh, if the startup has some uh, values, some strengths, and uh, needs some other uh, skills, and if CEO has those skills, I think that will be the good match. So uh, to, to see what is needed and uh, what is my contribution, not only uh, the investment I'm doing, maybe my know-how, my skill set, this is important. So to have a good team with the uh, young uh, team founders, uh, I think is very important. Then you can have a much better and happier uh, environment to work with. <laughs> So uh, we have a question for Abdul Malek. Uh, how would you approach mentoring other CEOs to become angel investors, advice only, co-invest? And I have, how would you approach mentoring other CEOs to become angel investors, advice only, or also co-invest uh, with them and uh, with them? And I have a question for you. So I know that your wife is very active in this field, and um, so when you do investment. Do you um, talk um, with her in terms of the investment? So because the, the CEO is very busy and sometimes it's uh, if uh, a female a woman also can rely on the man advice at home or is it just you take just the decisions by, uh, only by you? Well, you want to um, make me confess on stage that she's the boss? No, she's the boss. So, she's uh, the boss. 
So, of, so no, I know that she's the boss. So I was just trying to, <laughs> to see if you say that. Okay. So basically, when we vote, when we vote, if it's uh, she says yes, I say no. It's a yes. If I yes. say, if I say yes, and she says no, it's a no. If we both so, say yes, then it's definitely yes. So um, that, that's how it works. Um, so basically, if, if there is any entrepreneur here, don't lose time talking with Abdul. <laughs> Go directly to talk uh, uh, with his wife. She's here in the front. So don't lose time talking with people that. Just makes you lose time, okay. And also another, another, um, another advice for CEOs, it's also a good uh, marriage therapy. Um, it, it helps uh, if you, of course, if you are interested to prolong your marriage, that's another way of also making a healthy marriage uh, because uh, it's true the success rate is, 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 is low, but the, the startups that uh, um, do make it, um, it becomes a joy. And uh, we very much enjoy the startups that really succeeded. And you know, when you have a startup that started with two, two, um, you know, two founders or uh, a founder and an employee, and then you walk into the offices and you have 50, 60 employees, and you know, the, the startup is growing and flourishing, it, it's really, it's really uh, rewarding, and it makes you forget the, the ones that um, you lost money on. Um, definitely, I encourage um, uh, CEOs to be angel investors, out of question. It, it is, it is a, a practice that will keep you on top of the edge, especially uh, now with the uh, disruption that's happening. I think if you, um, you know, sit behind your fancy office as a classical CEO, um, you will be completely, you will miss, you will miss the, the train. Um, it, it doesn't matter in what industry. If you are in logistics, if you are banking, telecom, it doesn't matter in what industry you are in. Today, the name of the game is disruption. And the, the best way for a CEO to be in touch with what's happening um, in, in his or her field is definitely startups. And being an angel investor, being part of an angel group, definitely um, is 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 a is a, a best advice I can give to uh, to CEOs, and I, I'm you know I'm not one of those who believe that uh, uh, giving wisdom is enough. I think wisdom has to come with with money. I, I think both. Um, uh, of course, it depends on. Once again, I this is what I this is what I tell the entrepreneurs. What what do you want? Um, if you want only cash. Um, and you want somebody to write you a check, we are the wrong address, don't come to us. But if you want a combination between a, a, a check and an engagement, then we are happy um, uh, to, to be your partner. So once again, it depends. Um, some, some entrepreneurs, they really don't want uh, uh, money. They want the, the, the know-how and the connections, which is fine. I mean, we do have these kind of entrepreneurs who approach us only for um, uh, networks and, 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 and guidance. Um, so I do definitely encourage um, CEOs to uh, engage with, with, the, with the, um, uh, the, the world of angel investment. Okay, um, is there any other question from the, from the floor that uh, people want to ask? Okay, um, I have um, a last topic before we do the, the final round. So in, um, in the program, it was said that uh, what is important uh, for an angel, a virgin angel, is to start and lose money, doesn't care about the, the terms, uh, because if it's a good company, then um, he, will, uh, he or she will earn money. If it's a bad company, uh, they will lose money anyway, so doesn't care a little bit about the, the, the details. Um, do you think that, and they were saying, and it was in the program about this convertible note versus equity. So for those that have invested in, uh, in companies, do you think that this, this is irrelevant to invest in equity and, um, uh, or invest in convertible? Or what you advice would you do to, to these uh, virgin angels? Don't care at all with the term sheet. For, for me, I, frankly, I think it's, um, you know, I prefer the equity, uh, you know, convertible notes. And then the day is the same. If the company, if the company fails. Yeah, it's the same. It's if they irrelevant. fail, it's the same. <laughs> convertible notes or whatever. If the company makes it, um, and if you are an angel investor investing in different companies, I don't think it makes a big difference. It depends on your strategy. I prefer the, the equity investment. And of course, a small comment on um, losing money. It's beautiful to learn from failure. 
but it's, if it's not your money. Um, I, I had a fantastic experience of a startup. They lost $300 million, and I was on the board. None of that was my money. So it's a good experience <laughs> to see how to burn $300 million. It's fantastic, but definitely not from your money. Hirsten, do you have, um, what is your, uh, what are your thoughts about this um, uh, equity versus comfortable note? Um, I don't think it makes a difference, but convertible notes are easier to handle. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the market is, I mean, in Turkey, a bit difficult to have convertible notes, mm -hmm. but if you can, so it's easier to handle. But if imagine a company like um, they approach you and they say, I want equity, um, you will invest $200,000 and you get 20% um, of this um, of, of equity. So basically post money valuation, $1 million. And versus um, they will give you a convertible note on the $200,000 in two years if there is um, some VC coming. So. Um, if this VC comes in two years and the company has grown, and of course the company valuation will be 5 million, 10 million is what at least you expect. So if you convert the 200 on a 5 million, you are getting very little um, valuation. Yeah, but, You're getting um, uh, like uh, 4%. So what, why, uh, in which conditions you should give, you should invest Convertible, um, not uh, equity, because I mean, on the upside you always lose on convertible. No. As a as an investor, if you are not sure about the valuation of the company, so what you do, you come up with a kind of um, time mm. term. You say, okay, at the end of 2018, whatever it is, we will have a valuation. round. Yeah. And that round, whatever price becomes, you get 50% discount on 50. Oh, wow. or 20% okay. or 30%. It depends how long the period yeah, yeah. is. If you are talking about a closing period about two years, you can get 80%. All right. So you are too early to invest. It's all about what kind of startup it is. Is it early stage or scale up of growth, etc. So that's the discount factor. Okay, we need to, to wrap up. So um, the takeaway, can you tell us a, a, bit, a bit the takeaway? We start, uh, we start now in that direction. So Ersin, takeaway for the, our audience um, w in terms of this uh, CEO issue, um, what you would like yeah, to say? A former CEO, I mean, I really enjoy being in this industry, not only because I invest and uh, try to make money. Also, I get a lot of um, intellectual stimulants I get a meaningful, um, uh, say, engagement. So I, I feel very comfortable being part of this, say, uh, very active, dynamic um, investment entrepreneurship environment. Okay, Tian. So how to make, how to be always happy? Um, I had uh, three trials, and two of them failed. One is still going on. Uh, so each and every one uh, learned, uh, taught me lots of things. So I, I looked at uh, those uh, experiences as it is. Uh, it is a learning stage. So it is it is good to really keep you uh, in alive and uh, in in the current business. So it is really uh, refreshing yourself uh, being in the uh, actively in the startup business. Thank you, Abdulak. Well, I mean, we all go to gym for fitness. I think this is the gym for, for your uh, mind and your bucket. It's, it's really stimulating, it's engaging, um, and it's refreshing. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to stay in touch with the disruption that's going on, I think that's the best and the most effective way of doing that. Sinan, uh, Yes, in the past, uh, I had two, uh, two trials, a part of my own uh, job. And I, uh, it fails. They, I fail them. Uh, so I think the best uh, job is the job uh, which I know uh, better. So uh, I'm now trying to concentrate on my own job, uh, but always uh, looking for and, uh, uh, and trying to find a, uh, a good opportunity as well. Pinar? 
Uh, as we are uh, speaking about the CEOs for the entering this uh, angel, being in angel investment positioning, but uh, not only retired retirement uh, preparation, because CEOs are very good for the, this uh, ecosystem. CEOs has a lot of knowledge, and in the future, they will help to boost this uh, uh, ecosystem. And the ecosystem needs the CEOs, uh, but only for the CEOs retired, CEOs also young and uh, early age, whatever you say, uh, all the CEO who has a knowledge about the business and all has to invest, uh, be the, should be the in angel investor. As you provoked me, so I will go on to it also for my name. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a friend of mine, he is, um, is a business angel and he belongs to my network and he tells me he never loses with angel investment because when he loses money with his, um, his investment, he also learns a lot about the industry and he makes a lot of friends uh, along with the other co-investors, so he's always winning and uh, as you see here in this panel, the all investors are with a big smile even uh, they have lost some money here. So thank you for coming to this uh, panel and uh, would like to ask applause for our panelists which were fantastic. Thank you.